Alright All right, guys, I'm going to try to make a uh, daytime kangaroo bag and I want to talk about a couple things here. Excuse me if this isn't clear because I've never done it before. But um, I, I'm going to talk about my pattern. First off, I've already got it and cut it out, which if I was thinking ahead, I would have filmed that. It comes from the American uh, Animal Rescue. I will try to get the link at the bottom. Wish me luck. And um, when you go there, there's a link that says files. And underneath files, it says to go to, uh, you have a choice of, of story or file. Go to story, and it'll take you to the Wildlife Refu Refuge League in, in Australia. And this is where I got the daytime kangaroo bag. I'm not sure if I'm cutting exactly the right size. Because I'm in South Carolina, I've never actually seen a, a kangaroo bag in action. But this is the daytime bag. Uh, they print on A4 paper. It's slightly different, but I don't think it's enough different to make any uh, real big difference to a baby kangaroo. Now, you'll notice that when you get it, you've got two sizes here, um, the pages instructions. And when you look at them, like here is... Um, I'm pointing at my cameraman. He needs to move in so you get a good shot of this. Okay, when you pin, up, uh, pin them together, you're going to get them and tape them together. They don't, ne uh, I didn't have a match at the bottom. This is good, this is good, this is good, this is good. But six and nine are different down here at the bottom. And it doesn't work the same right over there when you get the other side sheet either. But I don't think it makes any difference because I really think it's the same thing, just a mirror image of each other. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rescue my cameraman for a minute. I'm going to uh, cut the this video, and I'm going to cut these out. And um, I obviously taped them together. I taped them so that the lines met, and I didn't. And these overlap. And then I'm going to. You can't make a video without one of these. Okay. Now after that's done, I'm going to cut this, and I'm going to get back to you after I've got them cut out, and we're going to get them in the fabric. One tidbit about cutting this out, um, I did not cut on the lines. I'm assuming that this is the actual finished bag size. So I've cut on the outside some, and as you see, I just went around it. If you're really good and technical, got that kind of engineering dressmaking mindset, what you're gonna to wanna to do is put this on a bigger piece of paper and mark a, like a half inch around each edge here and make yourself another copy of the uh, pattern so it includes seam allowance, but I just kind of freehanded my seam allowance um, because I, I think the bag should actually be this size. So I cut this a little bit bigger around here so you have some room to sew on. Now I'm gonna go do the other pieces. Okay, because I'm kind of freewheeling this pattern a little bit, I cut out the back and gave it a little extra room all around the sides. And then I'm gonna sit take the same back piece and put it on my flannel, which is the inside piece, and cut around it. At least they're free wheeled the same way. Um, I can't promise that this isn't uh, an inch or so different than what they uh, said, but it's an independent standing thing, and I don't think it'll matter to the kangaroo. They're not all exactly the same size either, so... I'm going to put my other front piece on top here and uh, cut it the same way. I also have a little pile of these scraps and I'm going to go back later and see if they can be made into anything because I am buying this fabric. So there you go. All right, we're good. Your strap, it, it, the directions has it in centimeters and I'm not good at centimeters. It turns out to be 38 inches by eight inches. My fabric is more than 38 here. What I'm going to do is cut myself an eight inch piece and hopefully it's going to tear. So um, I'm going to make a mark and hope it rips. If it don't, I'm going to have to go back and cut it. But look at that. And this has got to be out of the outside because you don't want that kangaroo hanging from flannel.
All right, and now I'm going to start sewing. Um, the next order of business is going to be to sew the strap. What I'm going to do, I guess I can show you that while I'm running on this camera, I'm going to fold this here in half and pin it, and then I'm going to go over to my machine and sew it with a straight stitch and turn it right side out. Um, if anybody is really new at this and wants to know, you don't have to go buy yourself any washers. Pins work. I use them for years. I kind of like the washers. Um, if you don't have pin, uh, washers and you like the idea, you can use anything you've got heavy. Um, or you can just pin them. You see, I still got them sitting here because they're ready for the next deal. And um, I probably will cut all of this off too before I sew it. It got tangled up in the wash. It's the edge of the fabric. So, I'm not going to show you my sewing machine because there's all kinds of junk hanging around it. This is, I planned on getting into making YouTube videos, but it wasn't quite like this. Uh, this is more just to get this job done. So, excuse the fact that it's rough, a lot rough around the edges. And uh, if you're seeing my kitchen, it's also a big mess, but cleaning up is going to happen another day. Anyway. Here we go. I'm going to go sew this down and then I'm going to sew the outside of all of these uh, edges. I'm going to sew around here and around the inside of the flannel and I'll be back to you. Alright guys, as I'm doing this, I went over there to the machine, sat down, realized I had told you to do the wrong thing. Um, and right, right about two minutes from now, you're going to again wonder exactly how, much cat, how many cats this woman has. Don't ask. Alright, um... What I did is I pinned a front piece to a front piece. That's wrong. What you want to do is pin a front or a back. And if you follow my instructions, you now have two fronts and two backs for each one, which is fine because you will wind up with two kangaroo backs. So what I'm going to do to correct this, I pulled out a few inch or so of stitches that I made, and I'm going to go back and I'm going to pin a front to a back out of the outside fabric and then a front to the back out of the flannel and stitch around the outside edge where you see me pinning. So the object is to stitch all the way around here and we're going to leave this part open for right now. Okay. All right, I'm back. I've stitched around the outside of my bags. I've got a, a front piece and a back piece of the outside fabric stitched together around here and the same you see how coordinated I am right the same around here for the uh, inside and what I'm going to do is attach my handles I sewed my strap I turned it inside out I just reached my hand down in there and pulled it out like you were turning a pillowcase right side out and uh, then I stitched along the folded side too now I've got it here like this this is in the seam where the uh, the back piece comes together and this one is wrong so it needs to be right here right butted up against that seam and what I'm going to do is walk this over to the machine and I'm going to box it I'm going to actually sew down here like this a little bit across and up and make a little square and then make an X in it and then I will be back the inside to the outside so what I've done is I've treated this like I'm making a big old pillowcase or something. I've got everything inside out. See, there's my seams. I'm sorry, they kind of match. And here's the other side. They kind of don't, so you can probably see them. Um, I've got my straps. I boxed them. And there's the stitches in there. And I've put them on the inside here, matched them up with these seams, and pinned them down. Uh, I pinned it to this fabric here so it won't get caught. And I pinned all the way around. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sew them together. And um, except for right here, let's take this pin and flip it over. This is where I stop, uh, start. And this pin, right about here, that's where I stop. So I'm going to leave an opening here because I'm going to stick my hand in there and flip everything right side out. Okay, so I'm back over here. You see everything is big wide open like this. And I do have the front pin to the front and the back pin to the back. So I'm on top of it this time. All so right. I pinned them all together around their outside edges here. Me and my friends. 
and uh, I left this little hole here to open it up. And I'll confess to you what I did is I opened it off up before I uh, turned the camera on. So I knew I don't have a horrible mess going on in here. So then I turned it right back out so I can show you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it. And right about the time I did this, I, I looked and I said, oh, we're wrong. But I'm really not. This is not ta this is not bad. So what you're going to do, you still got a pillowcase. This is the this is the two wrong sides and uh, the two insides, and this is the two outsides. You're going to stick them down in here like this. Put the inside on the inside, and um, it begins to look like a Joey should live in here. And take a minute and put all this together so it's right. Now, I realize that my boxes are a little bit off somehow, but I like it because what I'm going to do is wind up with an extra seam. So I'm going to get some pins. I'm going to take this opening I've got here, and I'm going to pin that closed like that. And then I'm going to go over here to where I boxed my edges and turn everything right out because poke at it. It wouldn't hurt to take a needle or a, a, a knitting needle or a, a chopstick or something like that and straighten it out. I don't really know how much Joey cares. If I did this again, you see I put this like on the edge of the seam. Next one I make, I'm going to put the a handle all the way on the corner. But um, I'm going to fold this back up like so, pin it down again, and then go to the other side the same way, the other end of the handle. And once I've got that done, I can show it to you. It looks pretty much like a bag. And I can see Joey hanging from some sort of uh, hanging system and recovering from his traumatic injuries. So, the next step and last step, my cameraman is happy to say, is going to be to stitch all the way around the seam where they come together like this, around the edge, and catch here where I've done this, and the where the opening is in the other side. So I'm going to go do that, and that'll be the last one. We'll finished the kangaroo bag. And I'm going to tell you the good and the bad here. This is what I did the last step since I talked to you, cut the film. I stitched all the way around the edges. When I did, I, had, I realized I had a fold here. This is where I messed up. I, I'm sure this uh, strap is supposed to be called an F-hold. So the next game is to figure out how. I fortunately also have some, another bag cut out, so I can just go do that. But what I did is I folded it over and I stitched it twice. And that makes it lay flat. And it just basically looks like... Joey needs to hop right in there. So, I am done, and I hope this helps. Uh, I, the only other thing I gotta do is sit here. They say be very careful, and uh, look for, for little loose threads. So, I'm not gonna do that while you're watching, because it's kinda dull, but I am gonna make sure that there are any threads, because those little guys have little mitts, and they can go in there and grab them. So, otherwise, I'm good to go, and I think it came out pretty well. Good luck, happy sewing, and uh, God bless Australia.